Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all of the books on my TBR that are like 500 plus pages. Um, I started with 500, but I have 17 books <laughs> that I'm going to talk about today because I guess I just love chunky books. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. Um, there's going to be no rhyme or reason because I just have a stack here. Some of them I know a lot about, some of them I don't, but yeah, let's just dive right in. So the first one, The Wise, uh, the wise Man's Fear, this is book two in the King's Ki uh, King Killer Chronicles, this is day two, and it's a thousand pages, um, or 999, but this is the second book of The Name of the Wind, and in that one, they t it, it's close life. Each book is a day of him telling the story of his life to the chronicler. I think this is what he's referred to. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, it's just Quoth telling his story, his life, how he became to be a powerful magician, how he became to be one of the most feared people. So yeah, this is book two of that series. The next one on the list is The Once and Future Witches. This one clocks in at like 5.05, so it's just barely there. And this one is about, uh, by Alex E. Harrow, this one is about three sisters um, in a time, they all get separated, and it's like, I think it's roughly like medieval time, um, but yeah, it's just about three sisters, and they're all witches, they all have different powers. Um, I don't know a lot about this book and I want to keep it that way. I just know that a lot of people adore it. The cover is phenomenal and I'm excited to read it. So, The Once and Future Witches. The next one is Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony, Anthony Dower. And this one is about a story that gets passed down from generation to generation. It takes place along three timelines. Uh, one of them is like 1492, one of them is present day, and then one of them is like a couple hundred years in the future. And it talks about what's going on in those different times as well as a story that has been passed down as well. And what that story, I think kind of like, what that story like changes into as time goes on. Um, I'm extremely interested in this book and I cannot wait to read it one day. Uh, the storyline and how it takes place over the span of a, a thousand years just intrigues me to death. So I really want to read, read that book. The next one that I want to read is like 600 and so pages is The Dwarves by Marcus Heights. And I, I love dwarves. Um, I love the the lore behind them. I, I I love books that are based on them. I love books that have them in them because they don't really get featured a whole lot. Like a lot of people write more about elves than they do about dwarves. Um, so when I saw this, I was extremely extremely um, turned on like turned on by it. So I got it and I picked it up and I absolutely adore it. The only problem is each book is at least five or six hundred pages, um, if not more. So. And there's like five books in the series. So yeah, but this is the doors and it just follows this young one. His name is Tungdil. He works on this, like he works for humans and he works like at this thing as a blacksmith until one day they send him to the mountains because they have a feeling that's where he's from to meet his, fa his long lost family. And the adventure unravels from there. So yeah. I really, really want to get into this series, and the flop is just phenomenal with this book. It's just such a good, like, feeling book. The next one is Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. Um, I'm not normally much into, I think this would be classified as literary fiction, but this story intrigued me, and if I remember correctly, it's just about this, like, this family... Um, the man is, the father of this family is a pastor and he's like wanting to divorce his wife and the wife is going through things, the kids are going through things 
and it's just a book about life, a book about, or it feels like it's a book about life, um, and the things we go through and the trauma that can be held. So I'm, I'm interested in reading this one. If I'm wrong about it, wrong about it, please let me know. Um, but that's what I know about it. And it looked, it looked really good. So I picked it up when, um, Barnes Noble had their 50% off hardcover sale. So yeah, Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. The next one is the third in the Ink World series, which is Ink Death. I'm currently reading the first one. I'm almost three quarters of the way through. And it, the first one's Ink Heart, then Ink Spell, then Ink Death. And Ink Heart is about a gentleman named Mo, who when he reads out loud, has, he can bring things out of the book. However, he can also bring things in the book. Um, in the first one, you learn very quickly, the wife gets pulled into the book and bad characters get pulled out. So it's just such a good book. It's so unique. The world is so like, the world is really great. The only issue I have is when they re when they made the movie, they didn't make Capricorn as evil <laughs> as they did in the book. Um, that's the only downfall I had, but I really like the movie. But anyway, this is the third book. I don't know anything about it and I don't want to. Um, I want to know nothing about the second and third book. I just want to go in it completely blind. But the cover is very pretty. So, yeah. I'm intrigued by this one. But yeah, Ink Death is another one by Cornelia Funk. Funk? Funk? Funky? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. But Cornelia. I love her writing. I'm just, I love, I love, love, love those books. Um, the next one, which is a new one for me, is... A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer, and he wrote the uh, Southern Reach trilogy, uh, not, well, now not trilogy, I guess it's going to be have a fourth book, but the Annihilation trilogy. Um, but this one, <laughs> I picked this one up purely based on the cover, and the back just sucked me in. Uh, it says, warning, this book is not normal. Charlemagne is a giant moth, Napoleon is just a head, William the Conqueror is an eel. Vegetables you can will meet can talk. And it's just, it says, if you proceed, you must repeat the following. I have been warned and the risk is mine. Long live Squishy. And then underneath here, it says, who is Squishy? You'll have to read to find out. And it just, I don't know. It seemed like a really fun book. It's about a guy who inherits a house and he has to go, he has to document like every piece in that house. And of course it's like a horror house. So there's like tons of stuff everywhere. His grandfather like collected and kept everything. And as he's going through the house, he finds certain treasures that link to another world. And then he has to protect, and it, that world's called Awara. So then he has to protect Awara from our world. And it's just, it just seemed really, really good. So I definitely, I definitely picked it up. I, I really liked it. So yeah, A Peculiar Peril. The next one, which is definitely over 500 pages, is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I'm going to be totally honest. I do not know a lot about this book. I just know that it's really good. It's an epic fantasy, a standalone epic fantasy. Um, it has female um, heroines, or it has heroines in it. And yeah, I'm excited to read it. So... Priory on the orange tree, or Priory of the orange tree. I need to tackle this one day. One day. The next one is on, <laughs> I have a plan to read this for my birthday month, um, because I'm just that obsessed with this book and this author, and that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clark. If you don't know, I adored Piranesi. Loved that book to death. And I immediately bought this to read it. It's about two magicians, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, who have, from what I heard, who have very differing points of view on magic. Mr. Norell thinks it should be kept hidden, not publicized, not practiced freely, not like any of that stuff. And then Jonathan Strange is like, no, we should teach it, we should practice it, we should, you know, make a thing of it. Um, and then the book is just about those two. 
So yeah, I'm really excited. I really want to read this so bad and I have a plan to read it in July. So my, yeah, I'm just planning on reading that in July. So the next one is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Maas. I'm, I've never read Sarah J. Maas before. Um, a lot of my friends have, especially on a Discord that I'm a part of, but I read at the back of this and I read the synopsis and I, it drew me in. Um, a girl, a Bri the main character Bryce, her best friend gets killed and as she's investigating her best friend's killing, she dives deeper into Crescent City, which unlocks more and more and more dark secrets that the city is holding. And that just intrigued me. That sucked me in. So I cannot wait to read this one day. Um, cannot wait. So yeah, House of Earth and Blood by Crescent City, or House of Earth and Blood Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. The next one, which I think is over 500 pages. Yeah, this has 620 is The Black Coast, which is by Mike Brooks, and it's the God King, God King, God King Chronicles. Um, I've had this one on my list for years. Really need to tackle it. Uh, it's back when I was trying to get back into reading. I saw this, picked it up, and I never read it. But it's about, I don't know what the main character is, but it's about the, oh, the Black Keep, and I don't know how to say that name. The Jarrakas? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm so sorry. But it's about this one kingdom having to flee to the Black Keep because something's invading their land. Um, they don't know what. It's just this demon thing that, that's like taking control of their land. So they have to come to the Black Keep who normally they fight with. Um, and then it's just about who can survive. Uh, what exactly is this demon thing that's like attacking their island? Uh, so yeah. It says war dragons, fearsome raiders, and a demonic war lord, war lord on the rise. And that just sounded so good. So I picked it up. So Black Coast by Mike Brooks. The next one, <laughs> it's one that I want to get to so bad, but I realized that people advise to read her books in order, I guess, rather than like sections. So I want to start with Assassin's Apprentice first. But that is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is book one of the Life Ship Trader series, but apparently it's like best to read her books like from the Assassin's or Assassin's Apprentice on. Please correct me if I'm wrong because I really would like to read this book. Um, it just sounds amazing. It's about these ships that are made from this certain wood in the forest of uh, the Rainwild and that makes them alive and they it's called their quickening when three people die on board they quicken to create like to get their new um their new master so one girl thinks it's hers but another guy actually claims it and then he just has he's a, a dark wizard who has pow who has uh plans of his own and it's just all about that and i've heard nothing but fantastic things about robin hobb and her writing and all that stuff so I'm, I'm super excited to read this um so yeah please correct me if I'm wrong uh, about reading it if I'm okay to read this when I haven't read any of the other ones please let me know the next one which I will be finishing this month is Conjuring of Light by Victoria Schwab I adore this series <laughs> I've talked about it an, a, a lot um I love this series so much uh it's the third book in the Shades of Magic um, the first one being A Darker Shade of Magic. It's about a magician named Kel, who's Antari. He uses blood magic to be able to transfer to worlds. And then each book has its own, like, major plot. It doesn't build to one plot. I don't, well, I mean, it might, but each book has its very certain thing going on. And Gathering of Shadows kind of dropped off. <laughs> it kind of hit the fan. So I'm excited to see where this one goes. Um, very excited. So yeah, Conjuring of Light by Victoria Schaub. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. So the next ones I have are, which is The Big Boy, Empire of the Vampire by Jay, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Um, not, 
I'm not gonna lie. I don't know a lot about this book. Just know it has vampires. I know that it's political and I know that it's about like the sun never, is it the sun never rising or the sun never setting? Oh, so it's the sun never rising and it looks fantastic and I'm all down for books about vampires. So like again, vampire, I don't really see a lot of books about vampires just like with doors. So other than like Twilight vampires. So like I'm down for murderous well, I guess Dracula, but still, there's not a lot. I don't think there's a lot, unless I'm just not looking. But I'm really excited. I've heard really good things about it. I love diving into just an absolute beast of a book and getting lost in that world. So one day I will do that with Empire of the Vampire. And I absolutely love this cover because I just realized there's animals in blood. So there's a wolf an eagle, snake, and a bear. It's pretty cool. This makes it all the more better. So yeah, Empire of the Vampire. These are my last three. So the next one is my only Stephen King so far. I do want to get The Shining, um, but this is the only one I own so far, and it's Billy Summers. And I got this at Walmart because the synopsis sounded really good. It's about a guy who goes on vacation, um, but who's a hitman? I think he goes on vacation. He might just be out somewhere, but he's a hitman, but he only hits guys who deserve it. Um, in turn, that makes him a bad man too, but he, I think he justifies it. I'm not sure, but he takes up a hit on somebody who says that he's a bad man and then things just go very, very south from there. And yeah, I'm excited. I post about it on Instagram and a guy, I can't remember his name. But he uh, commented that he really liked this book and he's a huge Stephen King fan. So yeah, I'm excited to read that one. It just sounded really good. So that's that. And then the next one is House of Leaves by Mark Dan Daniel Welski. Dan Welski. Um, I heard this was pretty scary and it looks... <laughs> absolutely crazy with how it's wrote. It's got words. It's got like, let's see back here, there were some pictures. It's got like sections where it's like written like this and footnotes. Um, I think it's about this family that moves into this like haunted house and then starts either documenting or telling what's happening. So pretty excited. One of my friends recommended it to me because She's like, as you're reading it, and the, 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 the font is, is in circles, and I can't find it right now, but like as the font is like rotated on the page, you're like running in the story, or like there's pages where, or you're turning in the story, and you're like, the, the story's twisting, but then there's pages where there's like one page per, or one word per page, and you're like running in the story, and I just thought that was really cool. I just thought that that was super, super interesting. And like, like that. Like I just thought that was extremely interesting. So I had to pick it up. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So those are all of my tone, my TBR tomes. Um, I love big books. <laughs> Don't own a lot of short books. These are the ones that are 500 pages plus. Uh, I have plenty that are three to four. I just, I just like thick books. I don't, I don't know. It's really hard for me to, for me, really hard for me to choose a short book. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have read any of these books or have any other suggestions for some tomes, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested in, uh, in more books to read as, as I'm sure we all are. Uh, so yeah, stay safe, be kind, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.